In the cross-training series, we're often asked whether tubes, tubeless or mooses are the best. As usual, we say we've got no idea and why would you trust our Gumby opinion anyway? So, we compiled all the info we could find from guys who are hopefully less clueless than we are. Look, there's definitely no best product. It's more a matter of what might suit you best. If you've got a very short attention span, here is the ultra short summary. And if you are still hanging in there, here's the summary of the pros and cons of each. Just pause to read. And now it's time for the ad break in case you want to go to the toilet. Mooses. I used mooses in two events and it's very cool knowing that nothing will stop you short of the tyre falling apart. It's also very cool being able to have that big footprint on the ground if the moose is soft enough. But when you hit nasty terrain hard, it provides that extra protection for your rims as well. Top riders can still smash a rim badly and get it out of shape, but the moose will do the best job of preventing this. It also gives you plenty of joke material for sexual innuendo. However, there are plenty of potential drawbacks, so while they'll be very common in extreme enduros, plenty of riders debate if they are worth the hassle for everyday dirt riding, unless you are hitting rocks, tree roots and the like, hard and fast. Before the moose fanatics get upset, I will say some of these potential issues can be minimised, e.g. if you match the correct moose to the correct tyre and use a good lubricant and aren't doing a lot of high speed riding, you can make a moose last the same distance as your rear tyre, although that's still an expensive option in the long run. Many say that once you learn the right system, then removal and fitting aren't all that tedious, as a lot of guys say. Tubeless, a great all-round system. It got off to a slightly shaky start as a small percentage of guys had some teething issues with the first generation tubeless, but these were ironed out in the second generation. Almost all the issues now are related to guys not following the instructions properly. Even at low pressures, the tubeless provides good protection against dinging your rims because the high pressure tube firms up the side wall of the tyre, but it's not quite up there with the moose in this regard. But as mentioned, it's a good all round system because it has a lot of the features of the moose and less of the drawbacks. One of the best features is running ultra low pressure for snotty terrain, then being able to pump them up for fast rides or on the road. Mind you, they aren't DOT approved in the USA, but somehow I doubt cops are going to ping you for this. However, if you often ride hard and fast in areas with sharp pointed rocks, these could punch through the tyre, the thick red protective strip and the thick inner tube. You either need to put more air in or go for mooses. That is the sort of shit mooses are designed for and you just accept the drawbacks. After trying all three over the years, tubeless is my favourite, but I won't bore you to tears. Just see my review here for more info if you think they might suit you. Tubes. There's nothing wrong with the old school approach of using tubes, especially if you aren't riding in tough terrain not bothering with low air pressure for better traction and you don't mind carrying the necessary tools to fix punctures out on the trail. New bikes come fitted with thin light tubes that are easy to puncture but most dirt riders swap them out for heavy duty tubes to reduce punctures. There are also ultra heavy duty tubes which can allow low air pressure and still provide pretty good resistance to punctures. Problem is they're bloody heavy and usually use a rubber compound that patches don't stick well to. So most riders tend to carry spare tubes with them. If you just cruise through easy terrain with higher air pressures, then tubes are potentially the cheapest system in the long run. 
Remember, there is plenty of overlap with all these systems. For example, you'll find guys at an extreme enduro event using all three systems, but mind you, tubes are getting fairly rare. Likewise, you'll find all three systems being used for dual sports riding, although mooses will be rare. So there you have it, a basic summary to start with. Just do your own research for more details. We should also mention there are two other quite new options, tyre balls and flat tyre defender. These could be worth checking out as well.